Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank. Today, I want to show you guys how I make the visors for my Mandalorian helmets. Or really, just any helmet at all. So I was going to include this in the how to paint and finish a Mandalorian helmet video, but a lot of you guys have been asking me to do this as just a standalone video and honestly it'll probably just make it easier for you guys to find, especially if you're new to the channel or trying to find just how to do the visors in general. Now in this I'm going to be going over the methods that I prefer and the little things that I found to do this. There are There's already so much information out there for doing the Mandalorian helmet. You can go online and search things like Mandalorian visor and that'll take you down a rabbit hole of Etsy shops and there's even websites and forums that are dedicated to this. There's T -Vi visor.com there's people searching welders visors but the method that i prefer is using something called acetate plastic or clear plastic sheeting and this is the stuff that i like and you can see here you can get it pretty cheap get into google start looking around what might be the best method for you but my method is using these clear sheets and window tint and i'm going to show you guys how i do it and hopefully it'll be a little bit easier for you if you're making anything more than one or two of these and you don't want to spend 20 30 dollars on just a single visor then that's totally up to you so this is just some clear plastic sheeting that you, like I said, you can get off Amazon, eBay. You can pick this up at some hardware stores or craft stores, and it comes in different thicknesses. And this is, I believe, a 0.6 millimeter uh, thickness, and it's very flexible, very easy to use. And you can see that it's a little bit hazy, but this stuff comes with a clear protective film on both sides. So as you're cutting it and handling it, you can, you know, peel it off and uh, it won't, it's not going to scratch anything until you're ready to get the nice clarity. And this is what it looks like once you peel it off. And obviously it's gonna show some fingerprints. So if you're gonna be making a visor like this with window tint or automotive grade tints, you're gonna to need to make sure you're in a nice, clean, dust-free environment. There's not a breeze going around. But what I'm gonna be using here is just standard automotive window tint. You can get this at places like AutoZone. I got this roll off of Amazon for I think any, uh, like $12 and there is a lot of tint in here. And what's cool about using window tint is you can control and pick how dark you want the visor to be. I have 5% window tint and I have 35% window tint. And while the 35% isn't that dark, if you're say in a setting where it's dark out or you're shooting at night or you're in a dimly lit area, you can swap these visors out. And that's what I like to do. I'm also gonna show you how I Velcro the visors in so then I can go and remove them. Say I need to repaint the helmet or just do something along those lines. You can swap them in and out depending on your environment. Previously for things like the Samus Aran helmet, which the video for this is coming, I promise, but at least I can show you how to do the visor. I actually used some plexiglass for this and this was much harder to work with. It was before I had remembered you could use this acetate sheeting. Um, this is a lot more difficult to work with it's a lot harder to cut you can't use scissors with plexiglass you need to use uh, some type of heat gun it's a lot more rigid and a lot stronger but I wouldn't really recommend this and I'll talk about that in the Samus video especially now having access to this so you've got your sheeting you've got your scissors you got your window tint let's get started the first thing you need to do is figure out some type of pattern that's gonna work for you you don't want to be sitting here back and forth trimming fit trim fit get yourself a piece of paper and make a template now I've already gone and done that this is uh, my first attempt at a Mandalorian visor and it came out really bad and really bubbly um, so you can you know you're gonna want to practice this and if you get a first shot good hopefully this video helps you but you're gonna want to make a template a piece of paper a standard eight and a half by eleven paper should fit and you're just gonna want to get it in there that as you play around with it it'll fit and sit in there with a little bit of bite around the sides you don't want to cut it just barely to fit because you're gonna have nowhere to put velcro or glue or tape you want it to overhang just a little bit inside of there and you can see it fits pretty nicely in there. And what's nice about this sheeting is you can heat it up a little bit to help contour it. So I already like how that fits in there. There's a little bit of an overhang and I know that I'm gonna have some good bite with the Velcro. From there, just trace it onto your sheeting. I did a really, really rough draft and I've obviously been cutting some visors out of this already, but you're gonna wanna go and just trace it onto your, um, your sheet with a Sharpie and you don't have to worry about writing on it because you have that protective film on it. So let's get this cut out. Now, honestly, I really don't care how rough and jagged my edges are. I'm not gonna square this off. You can spend as much time with this as you want and you can make it as look, look as good as you want it to, but if it just fits in there and you can only see the part that bleeds through the visor, it really doesn't matter how clean those edges are as long as what's visible looks fine and I'm pretty happy with that. It sits really nicely between the two edges inside the helmet right here. So I'm pretty I'm pretty okay with that. I have some good bite for some Velcro or some tape or again, however you wanna do this and uh, I can live with that. Now, before I move on to the tinting part, I wanna show you guys how I got this really hard shaped curve on the Samus visor 
uh, using an actual template I was able to print out. So maybe you're not doing a Mandalorian helmet that has a really easy curve and you need to take some type of hard edge. Now, depending if you're 3D printing, if you're doing cosplay or foam, however you're making it, hopefully if it's a 3D printed helmet, it will actually come with the visor that you can print out. Now, you can use some types of clear um, PLAs and pet Gs. I have never seen people have um, such good quality with those that they can do a perfectly transparent print. I've seen people get close with PETG, but this just seems a little bit easier and you get perfect clarity. So I printed out the visor. Make sure the scale matches whatever your helmet is. Now this helmet, um, some of the Mandalorian files come with these little visors you can print. And again, that's a perfect template. If you print that out, you know exactly how to cut this. So this visor fits inside this helmet perfectly. But again, if it doesn't, you pretty much do the same thing. Rinse and repeat, use some paper, use some cardboard, try to get it to fit as best as possible. From there, make a template out of paper because you can bend the paper and make those hard edges. And after you're done with it, you can lay the paper flat to trace it out onto the sheeting. So let's go ahead and transfer that over. So because of the way this sits in the Samus helmet, I only need to make sure that the bottom edge right here was the perfectly flush one. I left a little bit of overhang on everything. Again, secure, glue it in. So just evaluate what you're putting the visor in and you might not need to cut it as at the perfect template, but this just lets me know the bare minimum I need to put it in there. So once I have my template and once I have the piece cut out, I'm just gonna heat this up. Now, depending on the plastic you're using, I very much suggest that you practice with this. Take some little scrap parts and just start heating it up. If you sit in the same spot too long, you can very, very easily permanently warp this stuff. So just be careful with it. Less is more and take your time. Um, I'm pretty sure with this sheeting, I haven't tried it yet. I think just a standard hair dryer is enough to warp it. But again, be careful. Make sure you're doing it in a safe area and please don't burn yourself, especially with a heat gun. This stuff can do some serious damage to you. From here, I'm gonna figure out exactly where I need to put the template. I'm gonna line it up the best I can. And I know as it folds over, it's gonna follow this um, little template that I printed out. And then I'm gonna very slowly start heating the outside of the, the plastic sheeting and trying to just fold it over slowly. Again, take your time with this. Now, if you catch this while it cools down, if you have any lifted edges, you can bend them back real quick when it's in that kind of transition state between hot and cool, but it does cool down very quickly and it is pretty forgiving. And I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, I can live with that, cool. Now, because the way it rounded, it bent over, it didn't straighten out the bottom, so I'm just gonna cut this a little bit more flush. So I can live with that. I need to straighten off the bottom just a little bit more, but this isn't the video for that. I'm gonna go and finish this and you'll see more of this in the Samus tutorial. But this visor now has a nice solid curve to it and it's not fighting any elasticity and it's not trying to bend back constantly fighting against the glue. It's gonna sit in there nice and we can go ahead and tint this. So uh, I'll call that a win. There is so much window tint in this roll. Maybe the window tint method isn't something I would use if you're just looking for one visor. I mean, this is enough to do a few cars. There's a lot of window tint here. Um, another method you could probably also do is if you live somewhere near uh, an automotive customization shop or a Best Buy or a window tint shop, you might be able to just go there and ask them if you can take some of their window tint scraps. When I would used to tint windows, these are pieces I would throw away just regularly. And maybe they have a little pile, maybe they'd actually give you some of them. I mean, some Sometimes people are nice and you just need to ask. Now, this is 35% window tint. There's not a huge difference there. And this is 5% window tint. But you can stack them together and get even darker tint. You can layer window tints. That's totally fine. You can play around with that. But I really like my 5% tint, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Now, this is standard window tint. This is a little bit of a harder plastic. You can kind of hear it crinkling. This is vinyl tint. This is something a little bit different. This isn't something you typically use on car windows. You use this on stuff like headlights and taillights. This is very similar to vinyl wrap that you see made out you know, with stickers and all of that. So you can search this stuff too. If you're having trouble finding a colored window tint that you just, you know, you're looking for this green, don't search window tint, search vinyl tint, search headlight tint, taillight tint, and it'll give you a multitude of different colors. This stuff works a little bit different but it's gonna be applied the same way. This stretches out more, so with a little bit of heat application, you can wrap and take some uh, much more odd angles as opposed to just a nice solid curve. So for the tinting part, there's a couple little things I'm just gonna use. I'm gonna put down some paper towel because I'm gonna be using water to help get a, a bubble-free application here. So just make sure you're doing it in like a clean environment
environment. Again, you don't want a lot of dust or wind blowing around. I also have a little cup full of water and a little uh, piece of paper towel in there. Now you can use a spray bottle. You just need to get water onto the visor when you put the tint down. And hopefully your window tint or whatever you're using came with some type of squeegee. You can use a credit card, just make sure it has no jagged edges on it. So from this point forward, I'm gonna be working in kind of a clean state. So I'm gonna peel one side of this uh, visor protective film off and that's the side we're gonna tint. This is easily one of the best parts of doing this, is pulling off the plastic. It's like getting that new thing that has the new packaging all over it. Okay, that's ready to go. Now, on one side of the window tint, there is a protective film, and sometimes it's a little hard to find. Sometimes you can use two pieces of tape to peel it apart, but you're just gonna wanna find the protective film on the glue. All right, I found it. Now, the reason I'm just gonna get this a little started and bend it over, because I don't want my fingers being wet while I'm doing this, so. There's the little protective film, and I'm just gonna kind of crinkle it up over here in the corner so I know where it is. Now, you don't need to absolutely douse this thing. You just want it wet. You want drops of water spread around it, and then you're gonna put your tint on. Now, the second you peel this off, do your best to try to keep it face down, and don't really breathe on it or make any big movements. Lay it down on top. Try to keep it as straight as possible, and it is fairly forgiving as you put it on. So once it's down, you're gonna wanna start squeegeeing and trying to move all those little bubbles and drops of water, work towards the edges. And as you practice with this, and as you learn and get better with this, if this is the method you so choose, you're gonna start picking up little techniques and you're also gonna know when to call it quits. If there's one thing I learned from window tinting and just growing up working on cars and all of that, you never ever want a window tint or do any type of tinting or vinyl application when you're angry. And if you're starting to get angry while you do it, stop, come back another day. This is one of the most aggravating things you can do. So just take your time with it. Now you can see as I'm working the bubbles over to the side, you can lift the tint back up. That's what the water's for. So you can restart and push it back down. So if you start to see it crinkle or kind of bunch up, feel free to lift it up. We really haven't put too much force on it yet, so it, it will uh, it will come back undone. All right, so we're applied. It's stuck pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna really start pushing. We're gonna really try to work those bubbles out, but you don't want to move back and forth because you can cause friction and you can damage the tint. Some of you, a lot of you, most of you, one of you will mess this up. You will tear the tint. You will, something will go wrong. There's just too many of you in the world and window tinting is not the easiest thing, but it is a nice little skill to have, and I definitely recommend at least playing around with it in this sense. And you can never put too much water on this. I put how much I felt I needed, and I was happy with that, but you could definitely put more on there. The other key thing when working with window tint or any type of vinyl, get a fresh razor, get something sharp. Don't skimp out and use your completely dull X-Acto knife because you just don't wanna waste a blade. Just save yourself the hassle. Typically the window tint kits come with uh, really nice razors. I've never seen a switchblade razor like this. This is actually kind of funny. So make sure you have a really nice good blade on you, but again, be careful. And we're gonna go ahead and just cut right along the edges through the paper towel and cut your table. If you're doing this on like your kitchen table or something, I bear no uh, responsibility for your parents getting mad at you. And there it is, our tinted Mandalorian visor. Now with this cut, I'm gonna go and do one more pass around the edges and really try to drive the point home to make sure nothing lifted up. Honestly, my edges kind of suck, but you're not gonna see them. I'm all right with that. Now you can hit this with a heat gun. You can start heating the edges and get them to wrap around a little bit more. But if you have any type of decent window tint, it's gonna be pretty sticky and you're really not gonna need to worry about it. And again, once this is in, you really shouldn't be messing with it too much. You're gonna place it in there and be done. But now remember, I still have the protective side still on there. So depending on how you wanna mount this in, you can put it tint side forward like that. Or once we take this sheeting off, you can even put this side out. Now this is the side that isn't tinted, but it gives it a nice, uh, a little bit more depth to the visor itself. And clearly you can see through this pretty fine and it doesn't look like it's anything special, but let's go ahead and get this in the helmet. Now, depending on the method you were going with, I'm gonna put the uh, non-tinted side out because this is the side I'm gonna put the Velcro on. I don't wanna put the Velcro on the window tint because if I ever have, there, there might always run the risk of the Velcro kind of peeling it off and just adhering too well. So I'm gonna go and throw a few Velcro strips 
on the non-tinted side. And then that is gonna sit like this inside the helmet. Now you can get this giant box of Velcro that just comes in these you know, really long strands for super cheap, however you wanna do this. So I just went and placed a strip of Velcro in each corner and then on the, like the bottom parts of the visor itself. And I'm putting it on the visor first because it's gonna be hard to tell in the helmet where you wanna put each strip. So I have the opposition placed and it's just stuck there. And I'm only gonna peel off, in this case, I'm gonna peel off the, the outer two and I'm not gonna peel off these just yet. I wanna be able to slide this around without it accidentally getting stuck in something. Make sure when you go and stick this in there that inside's clean, you've wiped it down. You can even potentially sand the areas where you think it's gonna stick or use super glue and super glue the Velcro to the helmet. This way you can still take the visor out, but the Velcro is always in the same spot. So go ahead and place that in there the best you can. Yeah, close, all right. See, it might be a little hard to tell, but one side of my visor comes up way farther than the other. That was just my bad with measuring, but in the end, it didn't even matter. And now I'm gonna peel off the bottom part. That's it. Now you can see through it with the camera, you can see my arm, and if I do this, you can still see me through the lens, and it's like wearing a pair of sunglasses. It's really not that bad at all. But when I block out the bottom of the visor, you can't see in the helmet. You won't be able to see anything going on in there. Um, I mean, I don't even think you can see my hand up against the visor right now. But if I do that, then you can see my finger right there. But if I tilt back, it completely disappears. So it's just like wearing a pair of sunglasses. And this is the 5% window tint. Now again, you can use the 35. It's gonna still give you a pretty similar effect on how this, how dark it's gonna be, but you'll be able to see out of it a lot better in you know poorly lit areas or even at night. Now these two Mando helmets clearly aren't finished. This one is just the first little coat of uh, metallic uh, gunmetal or titanium that I'm using. This is just one out of the five helmets I'm finishing for that Mandalorian video. This one's white, that's just a primer, though it does look kind of cool and uh, that makes me want to leave it like that. So hopefully this video taught you guys just something uh, about making these visors. The one thing I can say about window tinting and using this type of method is you just need to practice with it. Uh, there's no, even this tutorial, like I can tell you guys kind of what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, but there's no substitute for just doing it yourself. You're, you need to feel how the tint moves. Again, you're gonna get frustrated. It's not the easiest thing in the world. So you really just need to play around with it. Dang, I really like how that looks. And this is the same visor from that helmet. I just took the Velcro out and uh, put it in here. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. Again, I really hope this just taught you something and uh, it, it a little interlude until I get all these helmets done. Finishing six, five, six, yeah, six Mandalorian helmets, all with different methods, all with different primers, paints, and finishing techniques. It is taking a little bit while because I can't just sand them all, spray them all. There is a little bit that goes into it. So thank you for being patient. I want these to come out at least video presentable. But you'll see in the video, I am messing up a few of them to show you the problems you guys are gonna run into when painting and using these types of metallic paints. If you guys haven't already, if you could subscribe, uh, I have more just not Marvel stuff coming out. This isn't turning into a Mandalorian channel, you know, 24 seven all the time. I still have tons of projects going on. I have DC helmets, I have some anime helmets. I just have a lot of other stuff going on. and. Uh, this was just a really fun thing to do. I know in a lot of pre tons of previous videos, long time ago, I probably said I was never gonna do a Mandalorian helmet, but that show was really good. And making these is actually really fun and I'm really starting to dig this white. My God, I might leave that. If you guys want more information in the meantime, please go check out the Discord server. Uh, we just broke 2000 members and also my channel just broke 30,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for helping with that and making that a reality. It helps with all of these projects and it's just, it lets me do giveaways. It lets me give back to you guys. Um, I'm running a giveaway right now. And if it's in the future when you're seeing this and I'm not running a giveaway, sorry, hopefully there's another one. Um, go check out Instagram and TikTok for more on that. If you guys have any questions at all about what you saw or you wanted me to cover something, please let me know as soon as possible in the comments, in Instagram, uh, on the Discord. This way I can incorporate it into the third video and I can kind of touch on some things like a little you know, outro. Hey, um, through the printing and through the visor and through all of this, you guys asked me this question. So hopefully that can help you guys and I can get that into the third video when the time comes. I'm sorry this was a little bit of a longer one. I did want it to be short, but if, as you, a lot of you guys know, I don't like leaving any stones unturned and I wanna get you as much information as I possibly can in these videos. So then you have, or you're armed with the tools where then you can go and do this. I don't wanna just say, buy plastic, get window tint, insert Mando. Like that's just boring. So hopefully this helped you. I think that just about does it. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much and uh you guys have a good day oh my god this thing is just yeah i'm keeping this <laughs>